uh, Psalms 34. It says, I will bless the Lord at yeah. all times. At all times. His praise shall continually be mm -hmm. in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Yes, Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Yes, yes. Uh, just want to read those uh, two, uh, three scriptures here. Uh, just, we need to make a boast in the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. 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 What season it is, how cold it is. So on today, we just want to keep in our minds and heart, God, we want yes. to make a boast in the Lord. Yes, yes. Lord God in heaven, we come to you, Lord, on this day, Lord. We yeah. want to thank you, Lord, thank for you. all thank that you. you have given us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the cold, Lord. We thank yeah. you for a place to stay, Lord. Mm -hmm. Because on today, Lord, we know there's people that's actually living on the streets, Lord, right now, and it's cold, and it's really, really dangerous, Lord. Yeah. We ask that you make a way that you bless them somehow. So right now, Lord, we're going right to just boast who you are, Lord. We want to thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank we're you. We're going to put our minds on you, Lord. Yes. We want you to come in, Lord, and just bring the water with you, Lord, as you come in and have yes. a seat, Lord, so that we can worship you for who you are. We want to thank you, Lord, in advance for all that you would do on today, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for our pastor again, Lord, yes. Lord, who you brought here, Lord. We thank you for his companions, Lord, for the way they work together, Lord. And yes. Pray together. On today, Lord, we ask you that you just remove anything from our hearts so that we can worship you for who you are, Lord, and that we can receive a word from you on today. We ask this all in your son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 Got it? Matthew 13, beginning at the first verse. The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside. And a multitude were gathered together unto him, so that he went to a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, and some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speak and bow unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever has to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever has not from him shall be taken away, even that he has. Therefore speak I to them in parable, because they see and see not, and hear and they hear not. Neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of the Isaiah, which said, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed growth, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sword. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed in the stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet has he not root in himself, but doeth for a while, but when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. And together, but he that receives seed into 
good scribe is he that heareth the word and understands it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Hallelujah. 
our team, a theme has been looking at the sower, the seeds, and the soil. And last week, I mean, we uh, began with the sower, the seed, and the soil. We learned that the sower is God. We learned that the seed is the Word of God, represented by His Son, Jesus Christ. And we learn that the soil is our hearts. The sower sent his son to spread the word that we should give us a chance to go back home to heaven. Yes. And although we live in the city, there's something, as I said, we can learn from uh, this parable about where seeds land on us. And we talked about that. And last week, uh, we talked about the landing. And by the landing, I meant that the place where the seed of God, the word of God, lands in our hearts. Uh, and whether it falls on uh, rocky ground, whether it falls on thorn, a thorny place, uh, but where it grows and how it lands. Uh, this day, I want to talk a little bit more about that, but I want to focus on the good soil. And so, uh, this, from our text, uh, scripture title today is Christians Growing Deeper Roots in the Word the promised blessing from seed and good soil. The promised blessing from seed and good soil. It's, it's important to understand as we have been looking at the parable of the sower that uh, it is the parable about the kingdom of God and who will be in the kingdom of God, who has access to the kingdom of God. Yeah. And Jesus said, that I'm speaking to them in parables because there are people who will not understand it. And, and for them, it is not for them to understand because they're not walking with me, so they don't get it. And that's basically what he was talking about. And part of that address was to the Pharisees and Sadducees who were in the crowd uh, whom he spoke to in a parable. So everybody was there. But not everybody understood. Yes. And so you can hear, as we even are here today, and you can hear the word. Yeah. You can say, well, it's cold, and I'm cold, and I can't hear. Uh -huh. And that would be exactly what, what the enemy would want you to have to believe. Amen. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, when, when I'm cold, I can't hear. It's hard for me to focus. Or, you know, when I'm distracted or i got issues going on in my life, things that, that take away my ability to be able to hear the word of God when God is trying to speak to us. Yeah. Uh, so it's important to understand that if you're going to grow deeper roots in the word of God, then you have to have your soil prepared. Yeah. And we've talked about that before, but I want to share a little bit deeper on it today. Um, but I, there's a couple of things before I go to my first point I want to go back and highlight. He said in verse 11, he answered and said, this is Jesus uh, speaking to his disciples, he said, he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it's not given. And, and what I want to focus on real quick in this before I slide to this next point, and then we'll go into what I want to share, is I, I've come to realize that not everybody is going to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can tell people about it. You can yep. try to get people ready for the kingdom. Uh, you can teach it. You can share it. You can in, in, emphasize it. Uh, you can call people in, up and say, this is what you need in order to be able to be ready for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And, and you, your hope is that as people who profess Jesus Christ, that they will understand that God is calling us to, as, as Marvin Sapp said, to something deeper, right? Yes. right? Not just surface level Christianity mm -hmm. where I said I confess Jesus Christ, but God is calling us to have deep roots in him. Yes. And one of the reasons that it is important to understand that is we have people in our church, we got people in, in society who claim the name of Jesus Christ, but have no roots in him. Yeah. Uh, the political winds will blow, and they go with the political winds and not standing fast on the Word of God. Uh, situations come up in our life, and we're down, we up one day, and we down the next day. That, yeah. that, and Jesus talked about that in this parable and said that those who have no deep roots in Christ will be like that. They'll just be wayward. You know, I'm good today, everything is great, 
uh, later on today something happens and now all of a sudden I'm down in the dumps. I don't know what to do. I hit the bottle, I hit the drugs, I hit the sex, I do something that takes me away from instead of focusing on the Word of God. Yes. I, 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 my roots are so weak that the enemy is easily able to deceive me and take uh -huh. me to a different place. Yes. But not only in, in verse 11 does he let us know that not everybody is going to get it. Yes. Not, we, want, we want our loved ones to get it. Yes. Uh -huh. But the bottom line is not everybody is going to get it. Uh -huh. Because not everybody has prepared their hearts to receive the word of God right. and then to walk with it. Uh -huh. Look at verse 15. And, and Jesus explains here exactly what the problem is even on today. As we look at what happens is happening today, he said, for this people's heart is wax gross. Yes, yes. Their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Mm -hmm. that, I think what Jesus is getting at here is that, they, like I said, there are people that come to church Sunday after Sunday, or don't come to church Sunday after Sunday. And they don't get it. They, yeah. they, he said their ears are wax gross. They, the meaning, they don't, they're, not, they're, they're not listening. They hear, but they're not listening. Mm -hmm. They don't take into themselves what the Word of God is actually trying to teach us right. so that we can live according to His Word. Yeah. We reject it. And, you know, as I told you, some of it, when he talks about it lands on the wayside, is the stuff that when you know you ain't doing right by God, and you hear a word that tell, that speaks to the place in which you or I are walking that is against what God has called us to live, then we, we immediately, like, Satan comes and just, yep. pick, oh, no, yeah. you don't want to hear yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. That go against what you've been yeah. living like. Yeah. So I want you to live, I want you, look, you just keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But you hear this, that you know and that you're walking in sin. Yeah. You know that it goes against the word of God, and yet... You don't want to hear what God is saying in his word, so you reject it. Yeah. Then he says their eyes. I mean, you can see. You can see if you're listening to um, the, the miracles of God that have occurred in our church yeah. and what God has delivered different people from, yeah. then you would be able to see with your eyes yeah. those who have overcome cancer, those who have overcome Yeah, situations. amen, amen. But it, it will mean, his point is that it would mean nothing to somebody to have joy because they, it's, you know, it's not me. Yeah, or or yeah. it could be me, and now I've been delivered, and now I still don't care who I was praying for, and she has been delivered from cancer. Oh, and it's still, amen, still amen. as mean as you want to be, <laughs> still as oh, negative. As you would want to see somebody. Yeah. I mean, God brought her yeah. to him. And she still, I don't know why we got to do this. I don't know what this is all about. I don't like this here. Just as negative as you want to yeah. see. But, and yet, so it's like she has been delivered from yeah. something. Mm -hmm. But you don't have the gratitude of understanding what she has been delivered from. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let, me, let me backtrack. Yeah. Because here's the other part. Because we also have folk who God has allowed you to be able to get up, move, and have your yep. being. Yeah. And, and it may be hurting you, uh -huh. but you didn't even appreciate the fact that he has allowed you to uh -huh. get up and be able to move. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now you don't have as much pain as you had, but you ain't giving God the glory that he is doing. Y'all yeah. uh, can't hear yeah. me. So I'm, I'm saying, yeah. it, that is what he's, when he says that their eyes uh, with, they see with their eyes, but they perceive not. That's what he's talking about. Yeah. That they don't even see what God is doing in yeah, the midst yeah. of this that's, that's, that would bring them to this. Yeah. And so he says that, you know, it's, it, they, don't, they don't understand with their heart. And that's why I'm talking about the soil is our heart. Yes. So let me take you to the first point that I see out of this. So the word of the, word, uh, the promised blessings from seed and good soil. God promises something about from this parable of the sower. Mm -hmm. And he says that there's something that happens when that seed lands in good soil and we let it grow yeah. deep roots. And what happens? So what happens when the preparation is right? That's what I want to talk about first. That's the first point I want to address. What happens when the preparation is right? 
Jesus makes an understand and a point here of making sure that we get it. He said in verse 23, but he that receiveth seed into good ground. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That good ground means that the ground, the, the, the way that we have received God's word mm -hmm. has been prepared. Yeah. I, you know, I talked about this at the beginning of the year and said that how we come into worship prepares our heart for receiving the word of God. Okay. If you come in just because you, yeah. get, well, I always go to church, or somebody made me come, or, you know, well, I guess I better go. If that's your attitude, then you are not going to hear what God wants you to understand about your being in worship. Uh -huh. yeah. If worship is yeah. not that important to you, or it's not the thing that you realize I gotta have word in me. Yeah. If that's not where you are, then you're going to be missing out on having good soil when the word is brought to you. Yeah. If you listen today, you heard two people talk about in our praise reports mm -hmm. the fact that you know, I, I hearing the word or reading the word, God when he, God convicts you yeah. of something, mm -hmm. then then it is important for you to. I mean, at that point, you ought to have some joy yeah. because now. You can hear God speaking, and you and it's like you can hear God saying, "No, baby, I need you to change this thing. Yeah, yeah. I need your attitude to be different than yeah. what it's been. I don't need you I, when I'm blessing you. I need you to be able to see the blessings that I've given you. Yeah. But the part of that if that is important is the recognition that I need what I heard. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen, amen. 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 Yes. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes. God is saying yes. a thing, and, and now if I, if I can receive it, and I and I realize that, that that word is for me, that is saying there's something about me that I need to change. There's something about me God is yeah. trying to say, do better with this. Yeah. I can help you if you let me. Yeah. If you're in my word, I will show you. Yes. But here's what he said. Go back. Let's go in here. He said, but, but remember, he said, those there will be those who listen or they, they hear, but they don't hear. Yeah, yeah, amen. They don't yeah. understand. Yeah. They'll see, but they can't see. Right? Yeah. And that's because the soil of their heart is hard. Mm -hmm. and, and they don't want to know any more than what I want to know. That's it. They don't want to do no better than what they have been doing. Yeah. They see no need to grow in Christ, grow in the Word of God. They see no need for it. Yeah. I'm good just like I am mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. tragedy strikes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Until the, some, some situation walks up into your life that yeah. causes you to have to reflect and call on the name of Jesus. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Then all of a sudden, you, you want to tell God, I'm, but Lord, I go to church every Sunday. And he said, I, I believe at the, at the point of judgment, the Lord is just going to say, you know, depart from me. I never knew you. Mm -hmm. You you claim my name, but you never walked according Amen. to my word. My you, you weren't consistent in your walk with my word. Mm -hmm. And and we walk around like we think it's going to be all right all the time. Well, I ain't doing nothing to hurt nobody. Mm -hmm. That's, not, that's right. not what he said. Uh -huh. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so... What happens when we, when the preparation is, of our heart is right, is we come to worship or come to the Word of God, waiting for God to speak to us. And when I hear what He says, I apply it to yeah. my life. Yeah. yeah, that's how you know the preparation is right. Mm -hmm. I stop doing the sin that I know now is of God, and that I know. I've been missing. I know that I've been doing this and it was wrong. When my heart is right, I'm ready to stop because I'm not going to be pushed around by every time that situation comes into my yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes, let me just break it, bring it yeah. to a different way. Sometimes it's that man or that woman that you used to deal with. Come on, yeah. come on. It slides up yeah. on you when you had not seen them in a while. Mm -hmm. and, come and, on. and they slide up on you yeah. talking about, hey, baby, you still look good to me. Maybe you or your husband or your, you know, somebody else or whatever. You still like, mm, yeah. We had a fight last night. Mm. Yeah, that 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 sounded pretty good. Mm. Come on. And you give them that smile, and they All take right. that smile and think, okay, yeah. it may be a Belinda. It may be a door open. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> When I'm counseling, when I'm counseling people in marriage, marriage counseling, I tell them all the time, 
The reason the Bible says <coughs> don't, don't, don't let the sun go down on your anger yeah. uh -huh. is in part so that you don't give rise to the enemy being uh -huh. able to get you yeah. as yeah. yeah. you can to try to get you off what God wants you to do. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. But what my point is, is when the preparation of our heart is right, when you come to worship and you've been reading the word of God and God has been speaking unto you and speaking into your heart, you come then ready to hear what God has to say. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. And you don't have to be prompted to say amen. Uh -huh. You don't have to be prompted to clap your hands. You don't have to be prompted to get up and shout. If, if the word of God is speaking into your heart and yeah. you're growing deep roots in the Lord, when you hear the truth, yeah. you say amen. amen. When, amen. when the word of God is, is speaking into your spirit because your heart is prepared, right, you can't sit there and just yes. do nothing. Amen. You know, yeah. so I'm not talking about being out of character. If you're quiet, then you're quiet. If you, uh -huh. if you, but what you cannot be is you just cannot be silent. Uh -huh. That means that there is some reaction to the word when it speaks into maybe an area of my life or yeah. in my heart that I have not allowed God to transform yet. And God is trying to get in there. Uh -huh. yeah. So what happens when the preparation is right is you come to worship or you come to the word of God and when you hear it, something begins to happen. You, 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 that convicted part of, you know, Lord, I didn't know. Lord, now I know. Lord, now I understand. Now I get it. Because that's what he said in that verse. He said, you know, there, because we know the mysteries of God, when he looked at in, in verse 15, and he said that, you know, that if they understood, they would be converted. Yeah. And that's the difficult, that's the difference in who we can be as Christians. If, if you and I are not convicted by the word of God, then there's something wrong with our heart, right? And that's what he's saying, that you won't be converted. You can't be converted if you're not convicted. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. If, if you don't realize you're walking in sin or the way you're living is in sin, then you won't be converted and you will not be in the kingdom. Uh -huh. yeah. Jesus makes makes that very clear. Yeah, that sure. that's that's the, that's part of the issue that we have. Most of us are living our lives and not been convicted so that we can be converted. Right. Sometimes we might be convicted, but we still won't be converted. That's right. that's the hearing, yeah. the hearing but not understanding or not wanting to understand uh -huh. or not live according to his word. Uh -huh. That's what that's about. Yeah. So he tells us that. But then he also tells us that as we transition what happened, what, uh, the, the word in, in preparation is right, then the evidence of seed and the word grow, growing roots. So uh, what I'm saying here is the evidence of the seed landing in good soil. Here's what he says. Again, let's go back to verse 23. He said, but he that receives seed in the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it. Right? Yeah. The evidence, but here's the evidence, which also beareth fruit. Uh -huh. If you and I are not bearing fruit, if there are no other Christians coming from out of your relationships, if people are not converted to Christ or for the kingdom, then that becomes evident that we are not growing uh -huh. roots. Yeah, my Lord. Uh -huh. And, and that's important to do. Yeah. That's important for all of us to see. Do me a favor. Go close that door. That's important for all of us to see. Yeah. When the word is growing in us, the evidence is found in our strength of handling life's trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus tells us. That there are, there are life trials and tribulations. The death of a family member. Uh, the loss of a job. Loss of income. How we handle it becomes really important yeah. and it determines whether or not our roots are in Christ or whether our roots are in the world. Yeah. And so the evidence of that seed that we have or whether the seed is growing in us is whether or not we, how we handle those situations. Yeah. All of us have faced situations in our lives. We have lost people that we love. Yeah. We, we, have, we have lost, maybe some of us have lost our job. And, or, or we lost some income or different things can happen in our lives. Yeah. And in the midst of all of that, how you deal with it determines whether or not 
the word of God has landed in good soil yeah. because when trials and tribulations come, and yeah. the Bible says trials and tribulations yeah. will come. Uh -huh. yeah. We're going to face trials and tribulations. You're going to face people when you lose somebody you love. The question is whether or not your roots are deep enough in Christ and not in the person. Uh -huh. mm. yeah. That's the difference. Yes, yes. Because if our roots are so deep in an individual and not in Christ, mm -hmm. then we'll lose our way. Yes. Uh, we planted our seed, and, and we planted the seed, but the seed is not growing, uh, uh, the Word of God is not growing well. Yeah. So we fall apart. We don't know what to do with ourselves. We don't know how to handle it. And so we go off and we go do things that are not of God because the evidence of the seed growing, you can see it. Yeah. You can see it. You can see it when it gets cold and people can't find their way out of the church. Uh -huh. You can see it when you don't feel quite 100%, but you don't make it out to where, well, I don't feel good, so I'm not going today. Yeah. That's evidence of where God is in your life. It, and then it mani manifests itself all the time. You can yeah. tell by how people come to worship whenever they get to worship. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. That it don't mean enough that what the seeds and the roots are not are not grounded enough in good soil, that getting to the house of God on time or getting to the house of God to be able to understand and get to know and be a part of the worship experience yeah. is not strong enough for you to be able to want to get there and know that you need to do it. Yes, you know? yes, amen. And that's the evidence. Yeah. Doesn't mean that you're necessarily a bad person, but what it what it does reveal is that the roots of the of the the kingdom of God are not ingrained deep enough in us for us to un truly understand the importance of being in worship and being with God and understanding God and looking at his word and reading his word and understanding his word and walking in his word. That is where God is trying to take us and what the parable of the sower is trying to communicate. Yes. That there are different levels of people in the, who, who walk with God. And, and you, if you want to be deeper, then you got to have good soil. Yes. Because the enemy, all three of the soils that, that Jesus identified initially, the, on, the way, on the wayside soil, the thorny soil, and then the stuff that grew, grew in the weeds, right? All of those were like seeds that ultimately those individuals will not make it to the kingdom of God. That's what he's telling us. Yeah. Because they're not, they're, it's not growing. You can't grow with the world and then grow with God too. Yeah. It's, it, you can't do it. He okay. said the, the word of God says you gotta, you gotta choose. Yeah. You gotta decide whether you're gonna walk with God or you're gonna walk with Satan. Yeah. Yeah. And so many of us think that we that that's not showing itself, but it does. Yeah. And so I'm just telling you today that not only do we see what God is trying to do, and we need to understand what God is trying to do. But we need to understand that in order for us to grow deeper roots, we need to know who God is. Yeah. And so we talked about what happens when the preparation is right. I'm yeah. talking about the preparation yeah. of the good soil. Yes. Then we, we talked about what the evidence of the seed and the word growing roots in us mm -hmm. is about. Yeah. Right? Yes. And then that the fact is, the last thing is the products of good soil. All right. And then I want to end there. The products of good soil are found in our family. Yeah. The products of good soil are found in our children. Yeah. The products of good soil are found in those whom we meet, maybe at our jobs, uh, those that we encounter, and whether or not they can see Christ in you. Right. Uh -huh. yes, yes. Not, not, not just that you might be a nice person, yes, yes. but when they see you, mm -hmm. do they see Jesus Christ? That is, that is the question that is important for all of us. Yeah. And so, you know, every once in a while, because of our habits, we might have been a people who, well, some of us may not have been, but some of us might have been, folk who cuss at folk. Yeah. Y'all don't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Folk yeah. who talk about other people. Yeah. Folk who always whining and complaining. Uh, folk who, who, you know, during the day, they, they this. But at night, they that. Uh -huh. Y'all can't hear me. Yeah. But, but you know what I'm saying? And, and, and so I want to know whether or not, and God wants to know whether or not, is it going to be for him or will it be for yourself? Okay. Yes. And, and, and so we talked about the evidence of the seed, 
right, growing in us. Yeah. Now we're talking about the product or what comes out of it. All right. Right, yes. what comes out. And, and Jesus says that if you are walking with me, then you're going to be able to produce some yep. stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if we're not producing uh, more Christians, yep. if we're not producing a better life in Christ, if, our, if, they, if the ways of our life are not changing, are not better, because we are not changing, and we the product yep. of good soil is that people begin to blossom who are around you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but they don't just blossom because they are around you. You become, you become stronger, too. Okay. People look at you, and they want to know what is it about what you have in your life yeah. so that I can have that, too. Uh -huh. We used to sing that song, This Joy I Have, The World Didn't Give It, and The World Can't Take It Away. Uh -huh. That joy has to be within you yeah. from Jesus Christ. Yeah. Right. And even in the midst of losing somebody we love, even in the midst of trials and tribulations, we, if you got good soil planted and seed planted in good soil in your heart, when you lose them, you can still stand strong because you know in whom you believe. Yes. Yes. And people will ask the question, how can you be still okay uh -huh. and you just lost somebody? Uh -huh. Come on, how is it that you can still go to church mm -hmm. even though you lost somebody? You, you sick and you still going to church. Yeah. How, how is it? Um, why didn't you just stay home? Mm -hmm. Because I realized if you got good soil and seed growing yeah, yeah. the word, I realized that I'm going to get better at the healing station of the word yeah. in the world of God and the word of God. And that was where I want to be planted. Yes. If I go get my healing from the healing station, uh -huh. then I'm going to be good. Yes, yes. And people will grow from that too. Yes. People will be asking you. And if they haven't, then you need to ask yourself the question. Right. Am I really living for Christ? Yeah. If folk don't ask you, are you a Christian? If folk don't ask you what is it, what's different about who you are, yes. then you ought to ask yourself whether or not I got good soil. Yeah, yeah. Is there good seed in my soil? Okay. That's the challenge. I mean, now most of us don't really ask that question, but that is what Jesus is saying. The product of having good soil and then having the seed planted in good soil yeah. is when I hear the word and it convicts me, yeah. then I then I convert. Meaning yeah. I, I confess my sin before God mm -hmm. and then I turn to Christ. Yes. That's where we are today. Mm -hmm. And so as we look at the parable of the sword, we look at this theme uh, for the year, Christians growing deeper roots in the word, the promised blessing from the seed yes. and the good soil. Yes, the, best, the, the thing that I need you to make sure you get and that we get is that God is constantly trying to feed the word to us. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. And because he, he wants you and I to be better, yes. he wants us to grow deeper roots in him. Yes, yes. So let us make this year yeah. the year that we grow deeper in the word. Amen. Make it to worship. Make it to Bible study. Make it to Sunday school. Make sure that you're getting the word in you yeah. and not just doing what you've been doing. Uh -huh. So many of us you just been living how you've been living. Yeah. And God has been calling you to a deeper place in Him. Uh -huh. But if you don't hear anything else, know that God wants you to grow deeper roots. Amen. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. You got to have good soil. Amen. Mm -hmm. This is the word of God today. Yeah. So we just extend our invitation to everyone who's here